Raised in Liverpool, where his father, who was from the Laugh, was working as a shipwright, the Manx novelist, Thomas Henry Hall Kane's connection with Mackled was through his uncle James Tear, the schoolmaster at the Khan or Central School. For those of you who don't know where the Central School is, you go along the road towards Ramsey and you take the turning on the right before you go down Slough League. And it's the house along there, about halfway along there, in the trees where Robin lives, Robin called it today. In 1870, Hall Kane arrived at the schoolhouse to assist his uncle during his illness, becoming the schoolmaster himself after his uncle's death. <coughs> Kane was a welcome visitor to the Manx Farms, where he was often asked to make wills, write letters, count up income and value stock. While living in Mackled, it is said that he carved his uncle's tombstone in Mackled Old Churchyard and restored Phoenix Cottage at the top of Slough Lake, carving the name and date 8th of January 1871 on the stone lintel of the door. I'm wondering if it's still there. He recalls in his book, The Little Manx Nation, published in 1891, an event he attended whilst at the schoolhouse. From the lovely schoolhouse on the bleak top of Mackled Head, I was taken one Christmas Eve to the old church of St Mackled with a companion, Billy Corkle, for the Eel Perry. This was the one service of the year at which the parishioners supplanted the vicar and performed the old carvels, some 30 verses long. Hall Cain describes how the singers would, began, would begin their verses way at the back of the west door of the church and with every verse we take a step forward towards the front. Paul Kane had composed for his friend a brand new carol. Looking back, he remembered one of its couplets. Hold your souls in still communion, blend them in a holy union. He recalls what happened. <coughs> Billy, who could not read, stood with the paper in his hand the wrong way up. Cain holding the candle, and Billy sang, Hold your souls in still communion, blend them in a hollow onion. <laughs> Paul Cain was a popular Victorian romancer. He put the Isle of Man on the literary map. His novels were set partly or entirely on the island. The Eternal City was the first English novel to sell over one million copies. His novel, The Manxman, was turned into a film by Alfred Hitchcock. He returned to live in the island in 1896 at Greba Castle, standing for the House of Keys in Ramsey in 1901. He's buried in Mackle Churchyard. Not on the head, albeit where he bought a plot of land, but because he realised people would not be able to get up to it in the churchyard. His gravestone is a remarkable obelisk on a plinth. It's one designed by the Manx Art Nouveau artist and liberty designer, Archibald Knox. And it's decorated with Celtic patterns and detailed characters from Cain's novels. In this 150th anniversary of Knox's birth, we can be proud to have such a fine example of his work in our parish.